Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Caltech Science Saturday being held in conjunction with IC Series, NASA's Dawn mission to the asteroid belt. Uh, this afternoon, we're very pleased to have with us a speaker from the Planetary Space Institute, Tucson, Arizona. This is Dr. Vishnu Reddy. Vishnu. All right. Okay, uh, welcome. My name is uh, Vishnu Reddy. Uh, I'm a research scientist at the Planetary Science Institute. Uh, so it's going to be a bit informal because I have live animals. So I might need some volunteers to help me out because I'm scared of some animals uh, like you guys would be. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, small worlds, uh, learn the basics. You know, just like in your house, if something goes wrong, you have a tool to fix it. So we're going to try and go through the different tools we use uh, to study these small worlds, okay? So this evening, if you guys go out and you know, look in the western sky, you would see the planet Mercury, okay? Uh, then right above that is actually Venus, okay? Pretty high up, okay? And here's a picture of Mercury uh, taken with the Messenger spacecraft. And here's a, a, a images of uh, Venus taken by amateur astronomers, okay, from the Earth, okay? It's pretty impressive. Uh, and then slightly later, say, you know, a couple hours later, Jupiter will be right overhead. You can see it really bright, okay? And then a bit, uh, just before midnight or so, you would actually see the planet Saturn, okay, to the south. So the big planets, most of them you can see with your naked eye or with a small telescope, you know? But there are countless other small worlds that are out there in the solar system that you cannot see, okay? And so we're gonna learn about those today, the things that you cannot see with your naked eye most of the time, okay? So here's a view of our solar system, okay? Taken from the above, so sun is here. Remember, this is not exactly the scale. Uh, so here's the orbit of Mercury, and this is Venus, then you have Earth, and then Mars, and then Jupiter here. Uh, but then you have all these green dots, okay? These green dots are all asteroids, these are minor planets that go around the sun between Mars and Jupiter, okay? Just like how, you know, all the terrestrial big planets go through. And then if you, you know, we've been keep trying to keep track of these asteroids, and there are about, you know, 680,000 of them that we've discovered so far, you know, so quite a bit, okay? Uh, there are more than 200 of them that are bigger than 60 miles across. So some of them are pretty big. The interesting thing is that if you stand on one asteroid, you would not be able to see the other asteroid because the average distance between each of these asteroids is about 600,000 kilometers. So it's pretty vast, although it looks very dense. Okay, it's not like, you know, you know Star Wars, you're going through an asteroid belt, you know. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. So you're not going to be able to see one unless you have, you know, asteroids like, like the Earth have moons around them. So unless you have a moon around one asteroid, you're sitting on the, on the asteroid, big asteroid, you cannot see the other asteroid. If you zoom in and get closer, I know the lights are a bit, maybe dim the lights a bit, you can see these red dots, okay? These, these are asteroids that come really close to the Earth. They're called near-Earth asteroids. Uh, and there are about, you know, 13,000, roughly about 13,000 of them, which are these red dots. You know, these are the ones that you hear in the news, you know. Asteroids are gonna swing past really close to the Earth, you know. And 1,600 of them have a chance that, you know, that they're either too big or they come too close that could be potentially hazardous, either, you know, either way. But if you go out and take a look, you know, through your telescope, uh, at an asteroid, they are just points of light, you know? You cannot distinguish them. You know, the word asteroid itself means star-like, okay? So unless an asteroid holds a sign saying that I am the asteroid, it would be pretty hard to find it, okay? So you gotta use tools, you know, just like you would use a screwdriver to tighten up a screw, you gotta use different tools to find different things. So one of the tools, like you know, astronomers like to use is our telescopes. So here's a telescope. It's called the Catalina Sky Survey. It's not too far from my house. Actually, I can see this from my backyard in Tucson. So it's up in the Catalina Mountains. And this is one of the most prolific uh, discoverers of asteroids that we have out there. So here's a picture of the telescope itself. 
the, the mirror or the lens that, we, the, that is there is going to be in the bottom, the camera is up in there. And it's a very old telescope that's been you know, refurbished and used for finding asteroids. Another telescope that is also you know, uh, very prolific in discovering asteroids is the Pan-STAR telescope. You know, this is on a mountain in, in Hawaii, and here you can see the telescope. So how do you find asteroids, right? You know, so the basic way is that imagine you guys are all stars, OK? Just imagine for a second. You know, you're people, but think you're stars. OK, who wants to be my asteroid? Somebody, I need a volunteer. I've got too many asteroids, OK. OK, the gentleman who's standing there, so. OK, you can come up. OK, what's your name? Benny. Benny. OK, Benny is going to be my asteroid, OK? So what we're going to do is, OK, so I'm going to uh, ask Benny to sit right here, OK, in the first reserve seat, OK? And then I'm going to take a picture of the, the room, OK? Just imagine I'm taking a picture of the room. Uh, then I'm going to wait for, say, five minutes or so, OK? And then Benny's going to move to, like, let's go back to your seat again. You can go back to your seat, OK? I'm going to take another picture again, OK? Then I'm going to wait for five more minutes, and he's going to move to another seat. So what's, what's happening here is the following. Asteroids are closer to the Earth, right? You guys are stars. You're pretty far out, OK? Since he's closer to me, as he moves around the, his orbit around the sun, he's going to move in a relatively short time, right? But you guys are so far away. You're beyond the solar system. You're out in the background. So you're going to be stationary. So when I take three pictures and, say, create an animation, I will see him jump from first seat to his back seat to the back. So you can see him go back and forth. So that's what we're going to do here. So I have a little telescope in my backyard, so I use that to take pictures of different asteroids to show you guys, OK? So here's one image. Here's another image, third, and then fourth. So if you look at these images, they're really hard to find because everything looked like a star, OK? And the, the technique we're going to use is called astrometry. It's basically measuring star positions, essentially. So here's an animation I created. Can you guys find the asteroid? OK, it's pretty obvious. OK, this is the little thing that's moving. OK, can you guys tell me which asteroid that is? Ceres? OK, no. Yeah, OK, we'll come back to that, OK? <laughs> OK, so, so now we found our asteroid. So Benny, we found where Benny is. He was here, he went there, and he went back to the room. So we know the time he was here. We know time he was in the middle of his back in his seat and even when he was back in the room. So, but I know the positions of you stars because just like on the Earth, there's latitude and longitude out in space, okay? Every star, just like, you know GPS coordinates, right? How do you guys get here if you don't know where it is? You punch in the numbers and there's GPS coordinates. It gets the position from the satellites and you drive out here. So in a similar way, all the stars in the night sky have latitude and longitude. It's called slightly differently. It's called right ascension instead of longitude and declination instead of latitude. So for example, you guys would recognize these three stars. They're the belt of Orion. So the equator in the sky runs through the belt of Orion, you know, just to give you an idea. So by knowing the position of all you guys, I can calculate Benny's position at different times, and those becomes the orbit around the sun. So that's how I find this position. So here, I mean, we use computer software to do it. But that's basically the technique, so how to identify the target. OK, you want to know what the asteroid is? OK, it's Vesta, OK? So that's the first target of the Dawn mission that you're going to hear about this afternoon, OK? So we're going to play a little bit of a game. So I'm going to show a couple of pictures, and you're going to tell me where the asteroid is, OK? Any, I'll, I'm going to animate it, but you can tell me before if you guys want. OK, where is the asteroid in this? OK, yeah. This one? OK. I got one. Oh, that is the asteroid. OK. Any idea what, what, which asteroid this is? Got to be a series? Well, yeah, sure. That's series, actually. So that is the big asteroid. That's the current target of the Dawn mission. We're actually around orbit, uh, orbit around series now. So you can actually hear more about it this afternoon. OK, this one is going to be tricky. <laughs> Any idea? OK, I, middle? Which one? OK, I, can, I, I have a laser pointer. I can give it to you. You can point. 
You can come up and point it. Yeah, you can push it on. Yeah. So this one? Okay. Did that one move? I don't know. Yeah, okay, we'll remember it. Okay, I'll remember, he, he's saying this is the asteroid, okay? All right, let's see. Close. Yeah, so there's the asteroid. Okay. This one is going to be even more tricky. And there's an asteroid in this image that is actually named for a person sitting in this room. Okay, any 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 takers? This is pretty tricky. Okay, yeah, I got this. Yeah, come come over. You can point it. Here, go ahead. Yeah, this is the red. Yeah, you can point it. That one. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, okay. That's pretty. Cool. Yeah, maybe. Big one? This one? Okay, so I got one that's really tiny and on the edge, and there's one that's really big here, up here. All right. Where is it? Yeah, there, he is. Okay, you know who, who's the person who's named after? Okay, uh, so this is uh, Dr. Mike Kelly. So he runs the Dawn program at NASA headquarters. It's named for him. <laughs> okay, this is a little bit easier. So if you have comets, you know, usually they have something fuzzy around them. So it's easier to, you know, you don't need to really blink. Uh, you can see them, you know, sometimes, you know, if comets are really far away, okay, somebody wants to point where the comet is. Okay, come over. <laughs> you can come over. I'll let you point. Okay, where's the comet? Uh, the other way. Flip it. Yeah. There you go. And then switch. There you go. Yay. <laughs> so you got, you got the comet out there. So obviously when you do the animations, the same way we try to take pictures of Benny, you know, so you can see the comet move. You know, sometimes it becomes even more obvious, like for example this. Okay, anybody, usually you could find it without, but this was a Comet Lovejoy, it came really close, it's still close to the Earth, you can actually see it. So I took this picture from the backyard, you know, so you can see the motion of the comet pretty easily. Okay, this one is tricky. Okay, I'm gonna point the object so you guys can see it, okay? You guys have to guess what it is. Okay, you have to guess, what is it? Yes, it is. What is it? Do you know what it is? Okay, he says series, close, really close. Okay, any more guesses? Yeah, go ahead. It's an asteroid, okay, way in the back. Okay. Oh, okay. This is the comet they were trying to explore before Ceres, okay? It's, okay, he got it really close. It's something like Ceres. What is like Ceres? Oh. That's right, so it's Pluto. <laughs> okay? So what happens, so it's, it's like this. So you go into a forest, okay? You survey all the animals, okay? There are lots of animals. So you know there's like say 10,000 animals. What's the next step? You want to find out how many deer are there, how many elephants, how many lions, how many tigers. So it's the same way. So after you discover an asteroid, or you know, we have 680,000 of them, the next step we do is called characterization. We want to find out more about them, right? It's just like if you're trying to you know, take a census of people who live in a particular area, you want to find out what do they do, you know, all kinds of other information, more than just the number. So a simple thing is how fast it spins, okay? Every object, you know, rotates just on its own axis, just like the Earth rotates every 24 hours. So simple information, like how fast this thing is gonna spin. We have to figure out a way to find that. 
what is it made of, right? You want to know what an asteroid is made of, okay? So we're gonna do some demonstrations now. I'm gonna have Whitney come and help me over, okay? And we're gonna try and find out how we go about doing this business of finding out how fast things rotate, okay? A way we do it, okay, you can set it up, okay? Is that here you have two asteroids that are spinning. This is asteroid Itakawa, okay? It was a target of a Japanese mission, and here's dwarf planet series. You can see how they spin, right? Okay, depending on its shape, okay, we get some information from the asteroids that will tell about the shape, okay? So what's happening is that you got the sun, it's reflecting life of the, uh, light off the asteroid, okay? The asteroid is rotating, and you get something called a light curve. So depending on how the, the cross section of this asteroid, the light goes up and down, up and down, depending how much is being shown. So we're gonna demonstrate that here right now, okay? Let's do that. And then you also have things like, you know, what happens when light, light lift, reflects off a, a sphere? Okay, we're gonna demonstrate that also. Okay. Oh yeah, let's, let's let, who likes vegetables? Bad question. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have a volunteer. Come, come on over. So she's gonna pick her favorite vegetable. We don't have a huge selection, but she can pick. <laughs> What's your name? Evelyn. Evelyn, okay, Evelyn is gonna pick the, there's some fruits too, so you can pick. Which one would be, oh. Okay. All right, okay, maybe dim the lights a bit. Okay, what, what's happening here is that we, we, we're gonna try and stick a vegetable on a, you know, a disco ball rotator, okay? So it's gonna spin it, okay? We have a light that's gonna act as our sun, okay? And we have a device that's gonna measure the amount of light coming off it, okay? And as the object rotates, you know, you're gonna be able to see the shape change right here, okay? All right? Hit collect. I hope this works. It's always the case, right? So you can see as the object is rotating, the light is going up and down because of the shape, the amount of area that is getting the sunlight, you know, and it repeats back and forth. If you can see it repeatedly. So this plot that we see here is called a light curve, you know, you know, and as the pattern repeats, we can measure the interval between, you know, the, re the repetition of the pattern and find out how fast it rotates. You know? Of course, you move the table, that's why it, all this weird stuff is happening. <laughs> okay, we can stop and reset it. Okay, I want somebody else to come over. Okay, I'll clear the run. Okay, who wants to do it? Okay, now somebody from this side. Okay, I'll come back to you. All right, you come over, sir. Oh, there's so many. All right, well, okay. Never. Okay, you can get to pick. Not the same one, of course. Um, that, that's out. Orange. You want an orange? Okay, we're gonna do an orange. Yeah, it's gonna stab it into the disco ball rotator. Careful. Yeah, well, it's falling off. Is that good? Okay, now we're gonna start. Collecting, well, let's see what the orange does. Actually, we can go through all of them. We have plenty of time. So what's happening here, it's not changing a whole lot. You guys know why? It's a sphere, just like Ceres. So that's exactly what happens when we try to look at Ceres and try to do this stuff. It's almost spherical, right? Because so you can't see it. So what you usually see in that case is that if there's color patterns, like bright and dark, that is an indicator. So if you have a spherical body, but it has like, you know, yin and yang, you can actually see the more of color variation on the surface rather than the shape. So two things make the, you know, it's either the shape or the color variation. Oh, sorry. We had a little. Yeah, we had a little, you know, malfunction. It came too close to another body. It came too close, yeah, exactly. So, okay, you get the idea. So, all right, so we have so many vegetables, we're gonna go through them, so. Okay, now this side. All right, so you can come. Next to you, okay? All right. Pick. What's your name? What is that? My name's Jeffrey. Jeffrey's. Is yeah, that's a potato. Then I'm gonna put that one. Okay. And how do you want it on there? Do you want it up? Do you want it on its belly? You gotta stab it in though. Yeah, good. 
No, you don't. You just jam it on. Yeah, there. jam it in there. You get you did good. Okay, all right. We're gonna clear this. And then we're gonna start again. We're gonna collect data. Okay? Don't don't touch it now, so we don't want it to move. Okay. You, the pattern has to repeat, so that's what is gonna happen. So the potato is rotating. Whoa. Okay, we gotta start again. <laughs> okay, just stop it. And then clear. Okay, we're gonna start again. Don't touch it. Yeah, don't touch it. Let's see what happens. So most asteroids are more like a potato rather than a bell pepper or an orange. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna repeat again. See, hopefully it'll repeat. Come on, go up again. Yeah, there you go. So because there's more surface area, it's gonna go repeat. Let's try and make it repeat once more. There you go. So you can see the, the whole concept. Okay, since we, we have a lot of enthusiastic people, we're gonna come, the lady in the back, you can come over. All right. Okay, we're gonna stop. Get the potato off. Okay, go ahead there. Whitney is gonna help you out. Okay, she's gonna pick some vegetable. What, what? Okay, she's picking a cucumber. Oh yeah, there you go. She did good, awesome. All right, that's a really long asteroid. You know, we have some asteroids that are like that. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's pretty high. I think the lighting is such that you're seeing only the top part of it. Should we, let, we could move the light around. Yeah, you gotta put a light like edge on or something. No, that's, that's okay, but you get an idea, right? And it's like, you can move it, I think, down. Okay, I'll restart it. Stop that. <laughs> okay, are we good? Yeah, let's try that and see if it helps. Oh, detector is pointing at the table, okay. See, you gotta worry about all of that stuff. Is that better? Okay. Let's try that and see if it helps, okay? That's a tricky one. Oh yeah, no, okay. Yeah, I think it's just pointing on the top, so that's why. That's okay, we'll try another one. Okay, who wants to do one more? Okay, way in the back, the lady who's standing, come on over. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the best one. Sweet potato. You gotta stab it in. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's not gonna hold it. It's, yeah, it's, it's not balanced. Yeah, you gotta stab it in the middle. Next time, we'll do that. There you go. Is it good? Okay, let it rotate for a while, it's wobbly. <laughs> yeah. You good? All right, here we go, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's wobbling, so it's actually tumbling as it rotates. Yeah, it's really cool. As strange as it sounds, we just found one of these out there. So yeah, <laughs> a tumbler. You know, instead of rotating on one axis, it's just tumbling, you know. So, all right, I don't know what happened there. That's strange, but. you stood on Oh, I stood on it. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, but you guys get the concept, right? Okay. You want to try the Nerf? Okay, one more, but this time I tell you what you pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can come over.
OK, you got to put the Nerf ball, because want, we want to see what happens with the Nerf ball. All right, let's see. This is like series. OK. Well, it's wobbly, too, so that's probably why we're seeing all that. It's, wa it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> I think the motor is dying on it. That sweet potato. Yeah, I think the, it's the, the detector is pointing too low, so it's just picking up the bottom half of it. It's, yeah. yeah, the pattern repeats. OK, maybe you can try putting it slightly flat, and then you can see it straight down. There you go. Got it? That's sweet potato. Yeah, that's, that sweet potato did, did, did a number on the disco ball rotator. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you, the values are pretty low, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you that's have to also watch graph. the scale there. But you guys get the idea. So object rotates, reflects off sunlight. Depending on the cross section, how much area is reflecting, we can find, you know, the period. All right. So the next thing we do, okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, we got to find out what they're made of. Okay. Oh, you got to unplug it. Yeah. So we got to find out what they're made of. So you got you know, different kinds of light. The ones that we see is in the visible wavelength. So you can see blue to red, right, like in a rainbow. But they're light that is, you know, short word of that that we don't see and long word of that that we don't see. Um, but if you look at plants, you know, what happens is that why do, why do plants look green? Anybody can tell me. All right. Yep. OK, so that's exactly right. So you have different pigments in the leaves, OK? And the way light interacts, it reflects more of the green light than blue and red, OK? So that's why plants mostly look green. But you have some animals that do something interesting, too. For example, scorpions, OK? How many of you have a scorpion as a pet? Oh, I don't have any volunteers. I was hoping one says yes, OK? <laughs> All right, so we're going to, uh, here, I have a little friend who's going to help me with this demonstration, and I'm going to pick a volunteer to come and help, okay? So you're going to come up here, sir. Yep, come over. <laughs> so this is Nix, okay? And she's a giant African scorpion. I am not going to let it out because if it runs away, we're going to have chaos, okay? So we're going to try and turn on the light. So Nyx is basically dark black, OK? You guys can see it. She's pretty mean. You can show it, walk it around and show it on the stage, OK? You guys see it? Don't drop it. <laughs> it happened in the car while, while we were driving. Not a fun thing. <laughs> OK, so you guys see the scarf. OK, let's put, it back, put her back here, OK? And we're going to turn down the lights a little bit more, if we can, OK? Maybe, maybe not. OK, maybe put, put her in a darker part of the stage. OK, so now, usually when you shine a black light, you can see how she lights up. OK, she's a lot more pretty when she's fluorescing. OK, so for a long time, we didn't know what was going on with scorpions as such, because um, even if you look at fossilized scorpions, you know, which are millions of years old, they still glow. OK, so here, you can hold the flashlight. Yeah, so you, OK, so you're going to stand on the side so the other people can see. OK, so it turns out what is happening is with scorpions is that uh, the, the, the pigment in their skin uh, basically, you know, scorpions can't see at night. They don't have night vision, OK, but they have to hunt at night. So what they do is that they take 
the light from the moon and the stars, literally, which is coming off in the UV wavelength, okay, and uh, basically take this UV light and convert it into light they can see with, which is, you know, green light, okay? So essentially, the skin of the scorpion is like a giant camera. It's like a, it's, its own light source that is absorbing all this UV light, and using this UV light, it's going to try to find its way around, okay? The concept I want to you guys know here is that there are substances, both in asteroids and dwarf planet, that absorb certain lights, okay, and reflect off certain lights. So in this case, the scorpion is absorbing UV light and then using that to produce the blue-green light that it can see, okay? I think that's good because she's gonna saturate. After a while, she'll stop okay. glowing. Yeah, that's, I think that's good, yeah. Thank you. So this is, I mean, so a lot of people ask me, it's like, how do you know, you know, this asteroid is made of something, okay? So right, we get a little happy sun back, and it's reflecting off, you know, light off the asteroid, and we use a telescope. You know, NASA has one telescope that is the biggest telescope uh, on the Earth is the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility. It's the only NASA telescope that's on the Earth that is fully owned and operated by NASA. Everything else is up above, beyond the Earth atmosphere. So we use this NASA Infrared Telescope Facility. It's, a, it's not the largest telescope in the world, but it's the largest NASA telescope on the Earth, okay? Uh, and we try and look at reflected light from asteroids, and we get something, this squiggly line, okay? It, it means nothing, but this is like a fingerprint, okay? And the way we'll know that is that we take minerals. So there's a green mineral called peridot. You know, you make nice, pretty jewelry with it. I, I love this mineral. And you, you crush it, you make it into powder, put it in a lab spectrometer, and you get a signature like that. It's, this is exactly like a fingerprint for this mineral. So we look for fingerprints. It's like you know, de detective work in outer space, but we use a telescope to find out what these things are made of. So, and then when we have different meteorites, we can try and get spectra of these meteorites and match with the asteroids. And that's how we know what asteroid and what meteorites are made of. I, I'm pretty sure you guys have touched meteorites out in the booths out there. So there's a lot of meteorites that are out there. You know, I have some too if you guys want to talk and ask about them after the talk. So why study small bodies, okay? Uh, one of the reasons is that we have issues. Sometimes they get too close. For example, uh, you, guys have might, you guys might have heard of this Chelyabinsk event in Russia in uh, 2013, where we had a large uh, object, large and sand, it was 20 meters across, so it's relatively big. It came and it burned up over Russia, and it caused some damage, okay? And so we're gonna see, it's gonna get loud, so hang on. You can crank up the volume for entertainment. So here's the shock wave, okay, after the, uh, the meteor had landed on the Earth. Okay? So it's pretty scary, okay? So the gentlemen are watching this without an idea what's gonna happen. Yeah, not fun. So you can see all oh, windows got blown off. Okay. A little bit long with it. Okay. The next one is the better one. So this is not a big deal. It's scary. Keep an eye here. Oh yeah, he's definitely scared. There's nobody here, so, yeah. But this, this one is, okay, I got, to, I got to turn on two videos at the same time for the right effect. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this quickly. <laughs> People were hurt, but nobody was, you know, killed, so. So, so you know, asteroids and small bodies are the only thing that can actually cause direct damage on the Earth, and we have an example of it within our lifetime to do it. It's not something the news media tries to do fear-mongering, but it's something that is 
you know, worth investing our efforts to study and learn more because it can definitely change the course of life here. You know, a large event like that over a big city can cause damage. Uh, you know, and then finally, this is what it ended up being. The big thing fell through a lake and there was actually a 600 kilogram rock at the bottom of the lake they fished out. You know, so that's a large hole in the lake. So we know why we need to study these asteroids that come close to the Earth. But, you know, why study Vesta and Ceres, right? You know, Vesta and Ceres are far out in the main belt. They don't come really close to the Earth. You know, here you have Vesta and here you have Ceres. Why do we study these objects? You know, so that's an important thing, right? You know, these are big objects that are not going to cause any harm to the Earth. Uh, the interesting thing is that more of a scientific nature. So in the case of Vesta, it is the uh, smallest object that has an uh, iron core, probably a mantle and a crust, just like the Earth, you know, Venus and Mercury, like terrestrial planets. It's like, a, you know, it, it, it differentiated just like the terrestrial planets. But it's the only one that is remaining in the asteroid belt, you know, of this type. You know, we, we have uh, evidence that says that 100, of Vest, 100 different Vestas existed at some point, but they've all been destroyed but we don't know why this is the only one that survives today. You know, Ceres, on the other hand, is also differentiated, but with completely different results. On Vesta, we found, you know, frozen lavas, you know, not active volcanoes, but, you know, lava that once, you know, flow on, fl was flowing on Vesta. But Ceres differentiated with more volatile rich, like water-rich content, okay? So both of these objects are completely different. And unlike Vesta, Ceres is much larger, you know? And, but it's still circular, you know what I mean? Nothing destroyed Ceres for four and a half billion years. It's been in the asteroid belt. So somehow it, it was either got to the asteroid belt much later or something is protecting it or something is masking the big impact features we see on Vesta on Ceres. It's still got a lot of poke marks, craters, but we're not sure why that is. So that is what you guys will learn about this afternoon. If you guys hang around, there's a you know, uh, an hour and a half long presentations, question and answers, and everything about all these small bodies. But I thought I'll just give a brief overview. This, is, this was what I wanted to do. And Ceres also has these mysterious white spots. You guys have seen these white spots? Any idea what they are? What that could be? Oh, we have a hand up there. Yes, sir. Aliens. Aliens. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of my presentation, but I'm, ha I'm here for, you know, we have plenty of time for questions. All right, thank you.